All right, all right, guys. Well, here, um, if you've watched some of my past videos, I've been working on a CR-10 um, that I got out of a guy's garage. Um, I've been working on it, upgrading it, getting it, uh, trying to get it to work normally, <laughs> but doing a lot of upgrades to it, too. It's been pretty fun. But let me show you the latest uh, little development and how I you know, did some troubleshooting to find out what was going on. Alright, so here's the CR-10 and you can see I made some modifications to it. Um, on the past videos you can see where I added uh, uh, so it'll have the dual Z-axis on it and then I even added uh, even though it does have the uh, its own motor and everything and they're supposed to be in sync when the system is off one can move uh, freely while the other one doesn't so I added that uh, timing belt here on the top so when one moves the other has to move right uh, that's the whole idea so and I don't know you know you could probably could I've seen some other kits you can probably do away with that with the actual motor um, if you're gonna tie it in like that but I think it'll be a little more precise if you use the motor um, and use the timing just to prevent it from uh, moving without the other one moving. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of a fail safe. I, I didn't want that to be the main uh, source of linking that whole rod, you know, if that makes sense. I, I, I think it's better to have both motors and use that as, as a preventative, not, you know, as the sole source. But anyway, when I was printing off, I started to get shifts on the y-axis. So, so this is positioned this way, and then you, you look at this, and this is a mild case. I had one that just shifted way, way off. But you can see how there's the shift. Um, I think it was positioned that way. Uh, but anyway, so I went through and I was like, well, you know, I'm going to replace the belt. I even swapped a motor on it. And, and while I was doing that, I went ahead and converted it over to a direct drive and I got the, uh, pancake motor up here. And then I took that motor and replaced that. And, but then that's when this happened, right? That's before I had, like I said, an, uh, an extreme case. So I was like, man, what is going on? So I took all this apart and I was like, is it a wiring issue? So I bypassed, uh, you can see, there's the factory wire. And here's, I, I bypassed it, ran my own cable. And if you ask me, I think, it didn't make any difference. I'm about to swap it back off and test because while I was doing that, I took all this off and I noticed, you know what? This power supply has been worked on before. There are a bunch of missing screws on it. Um, and I noticed that because I was trying to quiet it down. I knew it was pretty loud. And so when I took that off and I, I was tightening down uh, the fan, so that it wouldn't rattle around so much. And when I did that, that's when I noticed some of the cables under here were were coming loose. Um, Cause you, you gotta figure this is upside down now. So when that's right side up, uh, the board is hanging off the top, right? And all the cables were hanging. And while it was really, really noisy, I was always shaking the box and, you know, trying to get the fans to shut up and, uh, so I think that was the problem. The cables were kind of dropping, uh, especially on the, uh, oh, my glue gun is uh, falling over. This is the 3D touch, not the, not the original BL touch. And it started to act up. Um, and that's when I noticed these cables were coming off of there. And what I'm gonna do and I think that's the problem. I'm going to put all the cables back on and I'm going to hot glue them down so that they won't drop off while it's hanging upside down, right? And and I 
think that was the problem. Um, so I've got my hot glue gun. It looks like it's hot finally. So I'm going to go ahead and touch this up. And, and I'll come back to show you what it looks like. I'm just going to, you know, drop them down on some of the key cables. And I think I'm going to swap this back to the factory cable. And then I'll do a test run and see if it's still, uh, you know, missing some steps and stuff. But I think that was because of me, right? With this thing um, being so noisy and I was banging around the box, it just started to piss me off. But, uh, but it's from me banging it around and the cable's coming loose. So, other than that, it was running great, but... <laughs> Uh, but we'll see again. I, I really want to get this thing running. It's so close and I did a lot of uh, key modifications to it that I think were, you know, pretty helpful. And, uh, and I went ahead and swapped the, uh, the belt out. Both belts, actually. Um, yeah, but we'll take a look after I get through uh, gluing all these cables down. Alright, so I powered it up. And at first that rear fan back there was kind of noisy, but you know the way that goes sometimes, especially like these Ender 3s, um, that's where all the noise is coming from actually. I have a few printers up and running. Um, but they're noisy when they first turn them on and then they quiet down, but at least this one is absolutely quiet now. Before it was just loud as hell. Um, so I'm going to leave it in this state. We'll see what I can find to do a test print. I'm going to preheat everything. Yeah, I hope this does the trick. So I do want to get this thing going. And as far as all this goes, I can't stand this box you know, sitting over here. I'm going to prop this up. I'm going to put some legs on this thing, prop it up a little bit so it'll have its own little cavity under here where I can stuff all this stuff. Just like this, uh, uh, this is an Ultimaker 2 clone and I'm going to do something similar down here. I'm going to do it on this CR-10 and, uh, and mount the board power supply and, and all that good stuff underneath. Uh, and I won't have to mess with uh, with that external box. That's always a pain in the butt. So, well, I'm going to test print and we'll uh, see how it looks. Alright, it's almost finished. And you can see I barely have enough filament left to... Yeah, that's perfect. There we go. Yep, there's some ghosting there. But I did not have that layer shift. That's the main thing. So, yeah. Well, very cool. Um, So I'm still not comfortable, you know, this is, this, this is going to be a decent printer, but I've got these, these Ender 3s tuned in so good, um, or I don't have to, uh, worry about them at all, you know what I mean? With those Ender 3s, I can, I can leave them alone and not have to worry about them. And when I'm, I do have a Raspberry Pi on with the camera on it, um, I'm going to fix up another one like that and probably the CR-10 like that also. But with the CR-10, I've never been confident enough just to let it go. I mean, I'm constantly having to check on it, you know. Uh, but yeah, it looks like I'll, uh, this piece turned out uh, acceptable. But hang on just a second. So, I went through all that, printed off this piece, and they're coming out okay. 
think even my cat likes them. Uh, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and print off some of the other pieces uh, for this product that I'm that I produce. But uh, let me show you what I got. Yeah, so I went and printed these off. Look at that shift. I'm talking. It's a continuous. even shift all the way back. Isn't that something? I was like, well, crap, I'm going to try it again. And this time it was still a continuous shift in the Y coming back this way. Uh, not as bad as this one, but it's still there. I was like, man, what is going on? Um, and I forget what I was doing. I think I had just pulled this off and I was looking at it and I was going to think, uh, well, cause I'd already hot glued all this stuff off, you know, uh, tightened down the power supply. It's all quiet now. I know nothing's jiggling around. I was checking all the cables and I was thinking, well, it's gotta be, I wonder if it's, uh, maybe it's a bad, uh, stepper driver, you know, on the board. Because the board is not that old. I'd, I'd replace this. This is one of the, uh, uh, what is it, the SKR uh, Mini E3s. And so it's nice and quiet. It's actually a nice board. I have this board on uh, two, I think, all three of these Ender 3s here have been upgraded to this. Uh, but anyway, I was like, well, you know, I, I that must be it. I mean, I'm trying to troubleshoot it down and all of a sudden I took a glance up and went oh crap so sorry to say all of these uh, weird prints was due to my ignorance and uh, <laughs> and let me show you what I found yeah so I was just moving this back and forth and taking a glance wondering what the hell to do next and I looked over and went holy cow well, here it is corrected, but I had replaced um, replaced the belt, and I had it inside out, so it was just slipping. There was, you know, the knurled part was on the outside, so it was just slipping on that motor. <laughs> yeah, I just felt like an idiot after that. You know, I never saw it, but it was, uh, that's what it was. Yeah, so... I felt uh, pretty ignorant after that, but uh, so I went back and flipped the belt. Everything's running great, and let me show you some of the parts that I printed off. Yeah, so there's there's this one. See how that one was shifted? It's supposed to look like that, and these are coming out perfect now. And this I did switch over. This is the PLA carbon fiber and uh, printing very, very well. I mean, I'm pretty pleased with it. So, yeah, so that was my troubleshooting. Yeah, so it wasn't that hard to figure out. But once I did, I, just being from my ignorance when I put that belt on, I, I wasn't even thinking, you know. I just put it on there and ran with it and, and discovered it later. So, but at least I went through and I did hot glue everything down. I have the power supply much quieter. The whole machine is running much better. But, uh, and that was just all the tweaking I did trying to troubleshoot this thing. So, but I found the root, the root cause and it is now working and printing off great, I have to say. So, so that's it. Don't get discouraged if you're having trouble like this. Just go back and forth and think about it. Don't rush it. And uh, and this happens to me a lot. All of a sudden, I'll, I'll look at something and go, oh, that was it. You know, I worked my way around it. But that being said, uh, everything is working fine. I'm going to start. I'm going to put this thing back together. And then my next project, like I said, I'm going to put this up on a stand. Uh, and and get rid of this external box it drives me crazy uh, so I'm gonna put this up on a stand mount everything on the bottom here 
and uh, that's the next project. But uh, I just wanted to get this thing running great first, which now it is there. So, so stay tuned if you want to see how it turns out. Uh, it'll be one of the final modifications that I do to this. But yeah, just stay tuned. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for my next video.